Hello, it is Sunday, January 23rd, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Sunday puzzle. It's entitled Turns of Phrase. That's interesting. I'm very much looking forward to what that means for the theme. Um, but before we find out what that means, I suppose, I would like to thank a few people who have brought us this edition of the Daily Solve. B.W. Diedrich, Dan Stoko, and of course, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. Thank you to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. If you'd like to join their ranks as a benefactor, and that will get you uh, access to the Daily Solve exclusive mug, you can do so by um, uh, heading to patreon.com slash daily solve, and all the details are there. And of course, you can back at other levels as well, and any of them, for starting starting at a few pounds a month through the equivalent in your local currency, will get you access to the full range of bonus videos up on the Patreon feed, including the most recent um, New York Times mini puzzle, Speed Solve, and uh, the acrostics I've been solving recently, as well as all the, the various other bonus puzzles up on there, and more coming each week. And um, fun, <laughs> fun thing to share that happened to me yesterday, surprisingly, before I get on with the with today's solve. A few weeks ago, I had solved a, um, a crossword in the Times, not the New York Times, but uh, the Times, the, the publication that here in the UK is just called the Times, and the US is often referred to as the Times of London. And um, I was solving a cryptic crossword with a friend of mine with whom I often solve cryptics. It's something we, we enjoy doing together. And uh, it Upon completing it, it asked to submit the time with, with my name and address. So I did that. I didn't didn't really know what it meant. And today, suddenly, without any, or yesterday, I suppose, without any warning, I got this very nice pen set in the mail with a message saying, congratulations on your prize, Sunday Times runner-up, crossword 4987. And I looked up 4987, and it was, it was this Christmas-themed crossword that we had solved. And then this cryptic additional message, pens are with Dave H. I don't know what that means. But uh, there must have been some sort of solving time that qualified as a, as a runner-up. And I got this very nice cross pen set. One of them is a, um, you know, what I guess you'd call just an ordinary ballpoint pen. And the other is a, um, is a traditional, I suppose, fountain pen, which I've, I've only rarely used. So that's... Uh, I was I was utterly <laughs> shocked by this. I have no idea how many people qualify as runner ups. I would runners up. I would guess quite a few if I if I was among them. If we were among them. So anyway, fun uh, that reminded me about um, that there had been a New York Times cryptic crossword published that I do want to solve on this channel soon. So hopefully I'll I'll get to that. Anyway, hope you'll indulge my my sharing of that. I was <laughs> utterly surprised and delighted by that funny thing that happened. Um, all right, and I'm going to continue testing. Uh, doing comments at the end of the video for the time being. Uh, I know some people are not a fan of that already, so we'll just see. We'll try it for a week and see how it goes. So do continue watching until the end for comments on yesterday's puzzle. But right now, I'm going to move on to today's. This is, of course, a Sunday crossword, a big, an enormous grid. I'm always struck by it when I load the page. Uh, entitled Turns of Phrase, that will surely relate to the theme in some way, and it was constructed by Nancy Stark and Will Nettiger. Uh, Nancy Stark has constructed about half a dozen New York Times puzzles, and I think all co-constructed with Will Nettiger, who uh, himself has constructed, I think, several dozen, quite a few uh, crosswords. So, an experienced crossword constructor and a seasoned collaborator. And I suppose that's that's all I have to say on the matter. So let's um, let's get started. Okay, website, and there's a question mark here. Now, my first thought is attic, maybe, the attic of a house, which is stereotypically filled with cobwebs, because the question mark here is a pun or wordplay indicator. So I assume this is not actually going to be related to the internet. It might be, but my guess is not. Attic is pretty speculative, though. So let's let's look around. Home with a pointy roof. Home with a pointy roof. I'm actually not sure. And worked on Wall Street. Maybe this is actually attic, attic because worked on Wall Street could be traded. You could be, you could be a, a securities trader on, on Wall Street. Bring to a repair shop, say. 
um, I don't know, take in or T. I'm trying to think what it could be if it indeed had a T, if this were attic. Let's keep going. Creative springboard. An idea, perhaps? Don't know. That doesn't seem like a great match, but let's keep looking. If this were a C, cereal once advertised by Woody Woodpecker. Oh, I have no idea. Um, I just don't know. <laughs> Cheerios, maybe? I mean, it fits, although this doesn't look great, does it? Fictional character who says, I will take the ring, though I do not know the way. That would be Frodo from Lord of the Rings. So <laughs> I know some people are very disappointed in my failure to get, but I think both a Harry Potter and what was the other one? Um, the HBO fantasy show, uh, Game of Thrones. I was unable to get either of those yesterday without all the crosses. But this one I remember is Frodo from Lord of the Rings. So how about that? Okay. Um, so cereal once advertised by Woody Woodpecker. If this were a C, are there cocoa puffs or something? Cocoa? Hmm. I don't know. I probably shouldn't, probably shouldn't drill down on this for too long. Bring to a repair shop, say. I don't know. And if this were an A, home with a pointy roof. Why don't I see what that is? That's that's frustrating. I don't know. It does seem like it might be attic, though, isn't it? Doesn't it? Um, what about this down here? Right on. Could be amen. And here, lacking color. And then here, something to make after you wake. Something to make after you wake. Oh, the bed. You could make the bed after you... Oh, a home with a pointy roof is an A-frame house. Yes, okay. The A being the, the point. All right, I do think this is attic now. And here we have bring to a repair shop, say. Excuse me. I don't know. Lacking color could be drab, and glowing or shining could be radiant. Bring to a repair shop. Why? <laughs> Top in, toy in. I'm sorry, I'm sure this is blindingly obvious. Um, bring to a repair shop, say. Sorry, my throat is a little dry. Artists sketching pectorals? Question mark. I wonder if this will be a theme answer. It is a, it's a long answer with the pun indicator, and that often does mean that often does mean the theme. Drawer, toe. Oh, I see. Bring to a repair shop, toe in, as in car repair. Okay, I'm sorry. I was thinking of something you would physically carry into a shop. I don't know, watch repair or shoe repair or something like that. Ah, sorry about that. Tow in, tow a car into a repair shop. Yes, indeed. And artist sketching pectorals, drawers, drawers, could be, so this could be a pun around someone who draws a drawer, which is obviously sort of an awkward uh, phrase, but doubling up maybe as drawers for the purpose of the the theme, the pun in the theme answer, maybe? That, that's my guess, but we'll have to see. Cereal once advertised by Woody Woodpecker. I don't know. Corn Pops? Is that a cereal? It sounds like it would be. Corn Pops? Brief period of work could be a stint. So let's check this P. I'm not confident about that. Spot at a casino. Is that a pip, maybe? Is that what you call the little dots on a die? Uh, I'm not sure. And here we have vow to remain mum about hotel guests' secrets. Concierge, this could begin. Possibility could be an option. All right, maybe that is corn pops. It does sound like a plausible name for a cereal. Garden shed items could be hose, a, a garden tool. Uh, maybe vow to remain mum about hotel guest secrets. Honesty or something. And a bottle marked with a skull and crossbones. Poison, I suppose. Ah, so Pip, indeed, spotted a casino. I think, I think a Pip is the dot on that's on dice. Caramel fill candy. All right, I think this has come up a few times in the last month or so. Uh, Rolo, just a caramel chocolate thing, I believe. A little cylinder. You can leave this to me. You can leave this to me. I... On it. on it. There we go. Sorry, I had to think through some some options there. On it. And when you when you have a, a phrase in quotation marks like this, it usually means 
the the answer is also going to be something verbally that you would say in that same context. Declined, slid, as in uh, the numbers declined over time. They slid over time. You know, I don't know corporate figures or something like that. Um, small distance covered by a naval armada. So this surely is another theme. Well, maybe sure, not surely, but I suspect it's another theme answer. Small distance covered by a naval armada. I'm not sure still. Adversary could be a foe, and a hyperbolic wait time could be an eon. Sometimes it does seem like a Sunday crossword takes an eon. Aromatic trees. Um, I'm not sure. Evergreens? That doesn't fit. Needs to be plural. I just say that because evergreens often have that piney flavor, but flavor, uh, I, I guess flavor, but uh, aroma is what I meant. Group of followers. I don't know. Non-binary people, informally. Informally. I'm not sure. I'll probably want to cross on that. Mideast VIP. Um... Now, VIP, the thing about VIP is that it is abbreviated, so it could it could suggest that the answer is also abbreviated, contracted, um, it's a, an acronym, but it doesn't necessarily, because VIP is such a common uh, initialism that sometimes those very, very common ones don't sort of don't count as indicators of abbreviation for the purpose of the answer. I'm not sure. It could be Amir, as in an emirate. Uh, and that, that wouldn't be abbreviated, but I'm not sure. What about this? Early times in verse. Oh, it could be morns. Actually, that it does make Amir look more off, uh, more plausible. Let's, let's see what happens. Words after walk or cash. Cash in on, walk in on. Yeah, that, that, that looks plausible. And here we have a group of followers. And here we have response to no offense. Ah, none taken. What is this? The Bee Gees, Barry Robin, and Maurice Maurice Gibb. Brother something. Again, this is going to be another theme answer. Yeah. What about this? It might gather lint. It might gather lint. I really know what that's... What was this again? Group of followers. And we look at this now. 2000s Fox teen drama. I don't know. Jacqueline or Jack. And here we have aromatic trees again. I'm sort of sort of running into a wall over here. Let's let's move back to the top and keep looking around. Uh, browser window. A tab maybe. And what is this? Subject for Lousy. Uh, the Dow, I would think. And here we have sounds from a lab. Arfs, a dog, a Labrador. Uh, the art of fugue composer would be Bach. And a scorpion for one. Scorpion for one. I don't know if this is the insect or if there's another meaning of scorpion. I feel as though there are probably many things called scorpion. Uh, artists sketching pectorals. Right, we're back to this. Drawers of... Chests. Ah, I see. So turns of phrase. Yes, chests. A chest of drawers is a uh, an article of furniture, and so we flip that around to drawers of chests. Artists sketching pectorals. Literally, those who illustrate, who draw chests anatomically. All right. So now we sort of figured out what's going on there. What was this again? Small difference covered. Small distance covered by a naval armada. Um, uh, <laughs> this is going to be difficult to get without crosses. Sorry if you're already there. And then what was this again? Vow to remain mum about hotel guests' secrets. Honor of word, word of honor, honor of something of honor, I assume the original phrase will be. Honor of guest of honor, but we already have guests in the in the, um, the clue, so it's not going to be the answer. What is this? Main. Uh, it could be chief, maybe, is in the chief factor, the main factor. I don't know about that. 
either side of a beaming grin in a phrase. Oh, maybe, yeah, ear to ear would be either side of a beaming grin. Work rotations, shifts. Okay, I suppose that is chief. Interesting. Ah, is a scorpion an arachnid? That's interesting. I didn't know that. And one's kin, casually. Uh, the fam, I suppose. The family. And loosen, in a way, unstrap, unstrap? Streaming service acquired by Fox in 2020. I don't know that. Uh, some zeros and ones could be bits in computing language. Bit of data. Uh, a one or a zero. Bar necessities at times. Bar necessities at times. What was this again? Probably unsomething. Streaming service acquired by Fox in 2020. I don't know. I mean, based on how all these services sound, Tubu, Tubi, probably not Tuba. That would be strange. I bet it would be Tubi. Oh, yeah, sure. Then bar necessities at times could be IDs. You might be asked to show your identity uh, uh, identification documents for age verification at a bar. All right. So unstrap. So, oh, I see. Honor of maids is the phrase here. Maids of honor, honor of maids. So the maids, members of staff at a hotel, might be icy because they investigate, not investigate, but they are inside of a guest's room. They might see guests' uh, secret, I don't know, belongings or something or evidence of secret behavior, and they remain mum about it. The honor of maids. There we go. Declaration by one who's done playing. I fold, I suppose, maybe in poker, although this looks odd, this PF. Ah, although it's a scoffing sound, so pfft, that sort of thing, I suppose. Cost for a spot. An Oops. An ad fee. An ad spot in this case. And over poetical. Or. So we have the question mark indicator for a pun or wordplay. And so in this case, we're we're not we don't read the, the clue as excessively poetic, but rather as the word over used in a poetic context. Or uh, we're alighting the V in over. Easy. Everything's going to be okay. It's something. It's true. Tony Winner McDonald. I'm not sure. French. I like. I don't know. This this looks wrong. French. I like would be j'aime. I like. And easy. Everything's going to be okay. Just. What about this? Huge quantity. A scad, maybe? You have scads of clues for this enormous Sunday crossword. Run easily. It could be lope. I think of a lope as being sort of an easy run. Uh, it, not easy in the sense, easy in the sense that it's not overly exerted. It's not a sprint. Civil rights group once led by MLK. And here we have wasn't overturned on appeal and stays out all night. Well, that'll end with an S at least. Makeup of some music library. CDs, I guess? Wasn't overturned on appeal. I guess it stood. The decision stood. It wasn't overturned on, over, overturned on appeal. And a huge quantity. I guess it could be a SCAD. Tony Winner McDonald. Um, could be Audie or Audrey or... I don't know. I don't, I don't think I know the person in question, so I'm just trying to sort of think of plausible names. Stays out all night. Stays out all night. Oh, camps, I suppose. Literally stays outside all night. It has several steps, a stairway. What a dog walker and a strong-willed pooch might vie for. I'm not sure, but is this the is this the Southern Poverty Law Center, maybe? Civil Rights Group once led by MLK. I'm not sure. But let's keep looking around. Hoops organization, maybe the WNBA, the Women's National Basketball Association, I guess. Um to care sentiment. Uh a more perhaps love? 
driver of film could be Adam Driver, and modern day Carpe Diem could be YOLO, you only live once. First sitting prez to fly in an airplane. Wonder if it's FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, maybe, based on this. That sounds sounds reasonable given the time. I mean, I imagine it maybe would have taken obviously there would have been airplanes prior to FDR's presidency, clearly, but I wonder if that's the kind of thing that lagged behind for, I don't know, safety reasons or just sort of tradition. Let's try it and see. Benjamin Franklin famously called it a rank coward with bad moral character. Interesting that it's it, not a person. A Famously called it a rank coward. Interesting. And what was this again? What a dog walker and a strong-willed pooch might buy, f- might vie for. What was this? Right, oh right, this Benjamin Franklin thing. Um, easy, everything's going to be okay. Oh, just relax, I see. Yes, indeed. And here we have um, pointy part of a charger. A lance. I guess. So this is maybe, uh, we have another question mark, which again is the pun or wordplay indicator. So I assume in this case, we're referring to a knight, for instance, someone who is charging on a horse. And what was this again? This was civil rights group once led by MLK. P doesn't look very likely there. And I don't know that you'd call the SPLC a civil rights group per se. It's sort of a research. Is it the SCLC? The Southern... I want to say Southern Christian Leadership Conference. That looks good here. What a dog walker and a strong-willed pooch might vie for. Command of... So the original phrase is something of command. Something with a C of command. Um, why am I not see what this is? I'm sorry, that's infuriating. Uh, what a dog walker and a strong-willed pooch might vie for. Ah, that is infuriating. I'm sorry. I'm sure many of you are seeing these long before I do. Um, okay. What else can we do? Small distance. Oh, fleet. Small distance covered by naval armada. This must be fleet. Foot of fleet. Ah, Yes. Boy, I'm really not good at spotting these until it's really spelled out for me. A fleet of foot, so phrase referring to speed, but in this case, simply a foot of fleet. If the naval armada traverses only a single foot. Okay, somersault. Um, I don't know, some kind of, I don't know, flip, a little forward flip. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Two's opposite could be to and fro, and old-timey reproach. Phi, maybe? You might say, oh, phi. Reproach in an archaic sort of way. Like climates where cacti thrive, arid, dry climates, and somersaults. Oh, oh, maybe it is do a flip. So in this case, it's it's a verb rather than a noun. So the act of somersaulting, to somersault, is to do a, a a roll, maybe, is actually maybe more accurate than a flip for a somersault. And Willem, who played... Oh, no, I guess not. I guess it is a flip, sorry. Because Willem, who played Jesus in The Last Temptation of Christ, was Willem Dafoe, whose name I always forget is spelled D-A-F-O-E, not the what I would assume to be the more common D-E-F-O-E, but I remembered it this time. Something a snowboarder catches. They might catch air. They might uh, go off a ramp and catch some air. Uh, for sure, for short. <laughs> a little tongue twister there. Uh, it could be deaf, definitely. For sure, deaf. Playwright Simon, Neil Simon, and Nick of 48 Hours. Actually, I actually don't know that I've seen 48 Hours, but Nick Nolte is an actor in f- whose surname in five letters begins with an N, so that sounds plausible. And here we have a smiley face alternative, an emoticon, sort of outdated relative to emojis, I suppose, but LOL, lots of laughs maybe could be an alternative. And a caroler's repertoire could be, uh, I don't know, I was going to say No, not carol, because a repertoire would have several of it. You'd need carols, and that doesn't fit for two reasons. But noels, uh, 
another word for carols, Christmas carols. And a Himalayan humanoid is a yeti, a cryptid. I think Kathy Swope explained the meaning of cryptid in a recent comment. And aromatic trees. Um, could end in, it could be yew trees of some kind, yews with that Y there. Let's see if that helps. Oh, here's a theme answer shortly. What brass band music has? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't fill in yews here because this is going to be too too vague for me to, to be confident about. So I don't want to put something in that might trip me up later. Like some vodkas. Uh, infused, maybe? With sort of infused with some other flavor? I don't, I'm going to want to check the crosses on that, certainly. Watcher of the Skies, for short. The F, the federal FTA, the Federal Transport Administration, maybe? Or Transportation? Uh, or FT, no, not the FTC. That's the Federal Trade Commission. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Tall tails could be yarns. So that could be FTA. Is that right? Spuds could be potatoes. Oh, no, FAA. That sounds better. Federal Aviation Authority. That 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 seems much more plausible. Okay. So spuds could be taters, and uh, b both slang terms for potatoes, so spuds and taters. There we go. This all looks right. And this looks like plenty, doesn't it? What brass band music has? Plenty of, oh, plenty of horn. There we go. I finally got one. Um, slightly earlier than usual. And so horn of plenty, the uh, cornucopia, the horn of plenty is the, the phrase being, being turned in turns of phrase here. Okay. Blank dancer. Uh, don't know. And minotaur's foot would be a hoof bird known in the UK as a diver. Oh, a turn classic We've got the turns and errands, or ERN, classic crossword birds. Um, one of the boxing Ali, Ali's. Talia Ali? I'm not sure offhand. I'm going to have to wait on that. Something unleashed in a denial of service attack. Um, I don't know. It sounds like a hacking thing. Computer, sort of web hacking, I mean. Red light district establishment. A brothel or what? Red light district. What else? That doesn't fit. Um, I'm not sure. Fly into a rant could be go something, go mad, go ape. Uh, blank eyes. Uh, maybe I'll put that out for the time being. Old blank, motherland, affectionately. Not sure about that either, actually. What about this? Beat in a race could be outrun. There we go. Like the Radio City Music Hall sign is Neon, New York, famous uh, venue. And Pine could be an urge. Omega's place at the end of the Greek alphabet and alternative to Webster's in brief could be the Oxford English Dictionary, the OED. Galosh. Oh, this doesn't look great, does it? Um... Yeah, something's wrong here. Maybe urge. Pine. Beat in a race. Could be outran, actually. Yeah, I think it is outran. So beat, of course, could be present or past tense. And so uh, outran or outrun. But I think in this case, it's outran and pine is ache, which is better than urge. An urge, you wouldn't really use urge and pine in the, in the, in the same part of speech. The same, you wouldn't, well, it's not so much that. It's that you wouldn't, consider them direct synonyms in a sentence, whereas pine and ache could be interchangeable in depending on the context. So galosh is an overshoe. There we go for muddy environments, that sort of thing. And duh in modern slang. Um, I don't know. Is overshoe wrong actually? Totally fine. And here we have audience for Coco Melon, the most viewed YouTube channel in the US. Never heard of Coco Melon. Uh, is it? It must be a kids' channel. Certainly much more viewed than mine. That's there's no doubt about that. Uh, and totally fine. Oh, I see. A okay. All right. So that explains why this looks sort of odd. 
tree feature in winter. So it looks like absence. And then, oh, I see. Da in modern slang is obvi. All right. I think that might have strangely come up in the New York Times crossword before. It's not a turn of phrase, speaking of that, that with which I'm very familiar. I don't know that I've seen people say obvi very often, but uh, I don't know. Maybe someone does. Tree feature in winter. So these all have of, I suppose. Absence of what? Leaves. Oh, yes, indeed. Leaves of absence. There we go. So you take a leave of absence from your job and uh, we turn the phrase and we get an absence of leaves, trees in winter. Unless, I suppose, there are evergreens, the trees that I tried to enter uh, here. Oh, although now that I look at this, aromatic trees look like eucalypta. So how about that? And yes, and this you can count on them. This was a fort, good place to look. Actually, maybe it's abacai and eucalypti. Maybe that's tough. I'm never quite sure about those plurals, but I bet it is an I. Group of Greeks informally could be frat. So this referring to what's often called the Greek fraternity system in U.S. universities, uh, frats. Ballet sections, um, acts maybe, acts of the ballet. I don't know why I'm suspicious of how straightforward that is. I guess because so many things can be divided into acts, and so I'm wondering why is it ballet in particular? Maybe no reason at all. Quaint bathroom sign. Uh, gents maybe, sort of gent is a bit of a quaint way to refer to men, so maybe that's what that, maybe that's what that is. And here we have something swollen on a pro athlete, an ego maybe. And uh, note that this does have the question mark, the pun indicator. So we're not reading this, we're not using the surface meaning, something swollen, which you might think was a, uh, an injury has caused a body part to be swollen, but rather uh, we're thinking of it in a different way, a swollen ego metaphorically. Not even a little off. Exact, I suppose, this is what we want our answers to be in a crossword. So ballet sections is indeed acts. All right, fair enough. And if one got rid of something, one axed it. And what are the odds, we might ask? What are the odds I'm going to finish this, this puzzle in the next few minutes? I guess not very high. Uh, draws could be extracts. You could draw information out of something. You could extract that information. We're going to draw. We're going to extract the theme puns out of this puzzle. Gumbo ingredient. Oh, maybe it's not extracts. Never mind. Because gumbo ingredient, I want to be okra. Classic, sorry. Um, classic ingredient in gumbo. So draws, uh, tracts. Okay, fair enough. That's, that is probably a better meaning. Although I think you could probably use extracts for draws, but in this case, it is not the answer. Destination for a return flight. I don't know. Um, home? I'm not sure. I'm afraid not. Cla pun's line of a classic joke. Um, I don't actually know what the joke is, but I, I see the pun, which is punning on the, the phrase, I'm afraid not. Uh, so it's a fun inclusion in this punny puzzle, uh, even though it's not part of the theme, obviously, but it's in, it's in keeping with the spirit of the theme. Knock on the head. Bonk, maybe? You bonk someone on the head? Is that what that is? Oh, I see. Destination for a return flight. So in the case of a bird, a bird might return to the nest. Here we go. And sweetie could be bay, maybe? Have we reached the point where bay is no longer needs the qualifier that it is a bit of modern slang or something like that? I wonder. What was this? The Bee Gees, Barry, Robin, and Maurice Gibb. Oh, brothers of band. There we go. Okay. So band of brothers. There we ha there we go. And we flip, we turn the phrase to brothers of band. Oh, and a group of followers is a retinue. Right, I see. And 2000s Fox Teen Drama. Oh, the OC? And Jacqueline or Jacques? Oh, I see. Either one of those is a name, but in French, because these are both French names, either one is a nom. N-O-M. Oops, I put that in incorrectly. And here we have boxer lacking a left hood. Oh, I don't think I've seen this clue yet. Boxer lacking a left hood. Man of rights. Rights of man. There we go. So we, we turn rights of man and we make a man of rights. A boxer who, who doesn't have a left hook, only a right. And here we have a go-go oh, go -go dancer, I suppose that is. And 
was the, what do we have? What was this again? Oh, I haven't looked at this yet. Scottish cap is a tam, a tam uh, literally a cap on the on the head. Some pianos and motorcycles uh, really bother. Could be nag at. So yeah, some pianos and motorcycles. What is that? Oh, Yamahas. Yamaha, right, does make both motorcycles and pianos. And here we have, oh, right, it's that dog walker thing. What a dog walker and a strong-willed pooch might vie for. Command of chain, ah, chain of command, turn to make command of chain. Like, I see, the dog is on a chain, and they're, the uh, dog walker and the dog are both vying for that. Benjamin Franklin, Franklin famously considered it a rank coward with bad moral character. Right, okay. Baldi. Why do I not see what this is? What were these? Are these all correct? Hoops organization, WNBA, that looks right. Adam Driver, YOLO, first sitting Prez, flying an airplane. There's no one else who could fit with these, right? Yeah, I guess so. I just don't know what this is. Thomas Blank, British general at Bunker Hill. What was this? Oh, a motion in motion per May West. That sounds like sex, doesn't it? And last word of Ulysses, yes. I've not read Ulysses, actually, so I'll have to take it that that's correct. Beer brand whose name spells an article of apparel backwards. Oh, shorts. No, sorry. Stros, is that a beer brand? Actually, I'm not sure I recognize it, unfortunately. But it does spell shorts backwards. Uh, below par, poor, yeah, that's fair enough. Goo uh, eyes, googly eyes, maybe. Maybe this isn't turn. Could it be googly eyes? Fly into a rant. Go, oh, to go off. There we go. That looks right. Probably should have guessed that earlier. And what is this? Oh, right. This is the bird known in the UK as a diver. And here we have one of the, oh, Layla Ali. Why did I not? Oh, it's because I had turned in, that's why I didn't remember what that was. I'm certainly, I'm certainly aware of Layla Ali. So I just had a cross wrong. I'll watch out for that. Thomas Blank, British general at Bunker Hill and goal in musical chairs would be a seat. Oh, sorry, Layla. I said Layla, but I typed Layli weirdly. Um, I didn't know it. I didn't know it. I was had it correct in my mind. I just mistyped. Gold musical chairs, seat, and then something unleashed in a denial of service attack. Oh, is this a botnet? Is that what those are for? Heard that phrase, certainly. And, oh, a bald eagle. Ah, oh, right. So the bald eagle, the national bird of the United States. Benjamin Franklin did find that. He, he really didn't like the bald eagle. He hated that that was the um, going to become the national mascot, I suppose. He really wanted the turkey. Well, turkeys are pretty nasty as well. If you ever see wild turkeys, they're not <laughs> pleasant. What was this? It might gather lint. Oh, an innie, an innie. Um, boy, I really had no idea what that was earlier, but it means a, a belly button. All right. Um, this looks wrong. Oh, right. It's not googly eyes. It is, it's goo goo eyes. So Right. I had something. Oh, a bird known in the UK is a diver, a loon. Okay, loon and a diver. All right. Fair enough. And red light. Oh, sorry. I never looked back up at this. Nine, right. Non-binary people informally, NBs. Okay. So NBs for, for non, non-binary. Um, the, uh, okay, yes. The, um, what do you call it? The phonetic pronunciation of that abbreviation. Okay. And old, uh, I don't know. Oh, right. I was looking at this red light district establishment. Um, oh, a bordello, right. Okay. Sorry. There we go. Bordello. And here we have very productive feverish. It doesn't sound right. Um, what about this? Harvest could be reap, reaping and sowing. Columns with angles, op-eds uh, in a newspaper, newspaper columns, this means. PlayStation. So not a PlayStation, the video game console, because, well, one, it's not formatted correctly, but also because we've got the question mark indicator. So we shouldn't read it with the surface meaning. Anyway, what is that? 
a place where a play is staged, maybe? Oh, a stage, maybe. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the clues in the thing that I actually said, or the answer is anyway. Lumberjack's favorite kind of beer, a lager probably, pronounced like lager, the job of a lumberjack. Uh, and again, we have the pun, the pun indicator, the question mark there. Dispense with, dispensed with, sorry, I should say. And here we have NHL team with five championship seasons in the 1980s. Not sure. And praising, ah, praising poetry. It's our old friend, the ode, odes, poetry, po poems of praise. I suppose we could have poems of praise, praise of poems. As, but poems of praise is not enough of an actual phrase for that to work as a theme in this puzzle. Very productive. I see fertile, fertile ground, productive ground. Dispense with waved, maybe? You, you dismissed? I'm not sure about that yet. Court? Oh, maybe it is, because to court somebody could be to woo them, and announced could be said. Ah, and there we have it. Though I didn't realize the puzzle was going to end, but it did. All right, we've done it in... Boy, 37 minutes. These Sunday puzzles are just beasts, aren't they? So let's go through our fun turns of phrase. Enjoy these. Artists sketching pectorals, drawers of chests from chests of drawers. Boy, drawer is just an awful word. I really hate, do not enjoy saying it. Uh, the vow to remain mum about hotel guests' secret is the honor of maids turned from maids of honor. The small distance covered by a naval armada is a foot of fleet from fleet of foot. The boxer lacking a left hook, left, sorry, the boxer lacking a left hook is a man of rights from Rights of Man. And what brass band music has is plenty of horn from Horn of Plenty. And finally, I think that's, this is the last. Oh no, there were some downs as well. A tree feature in winter, an absence of leaves from leaves of absence. And here we have the dog walker and the strong-willed pooch might vie for command of chain from chain of command. And was there another down somewhere? Yes, there was. We had the Bee Gees, Barry, Robin, and Maurice Gibb uh, from Brothers of Band. Uh, rather, they are the Brothers of Band from Band of Brothers. There we go. All right. Uh, that was fun. Um, always, I'm always, <laughs> these Sunday puzzles always really take it out of me. They are, they are long treks. They're no, uh, they're no foot of fleet. It's more like a, I don't know, miles and miles and miles and miles of fleet. That's nothing. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. And let's um, let's decompress a bit with some reflections on yesterday's puzzle. Uh, we have some comments from, uh, we actually have several. So if you remember from yesterday's puzzle, there was a clue about an attraction in Denmark. And I was pretty confident early on it had to do with Lego. And it turns out it it did. It ended up being Lego House. And I don't think I was aware of the Lego House. And Remy explains, the Lego House in Billund is more of an interactive museum than an attraction like Legoland. It includes four rooms based on different experiences, cognitive, social, emotional, and creative, where people can look at but also build with Lego. And uh, Remy, Remy is calling for the, the, the comments to be returned at the beginning of the video. We'll see how it goes. They may well. Uh, Victoria Rajishka explains that the flask in 12 down relating to, I'm sorry, relating to pour over coffee means the decanter or simply the glass vessel that holds the coffee, which drips down from the filter. So in that case, it is, in, in my case, I was familiar with Chemex uh, pour over coffee brewing, and that would be the Chemex vessel itself, the glass vessel. So thanks for explaining that. And uh, Daniel A. Miller says that TBS, the television network in the U.S., is indeed known for picking up lots of shows when they hit syndication and for having very few original shows. So I wasn't aware of that, so thank you. That was, I think, around a channel known for reruns or something like that. Zio R95 explains that the largest stadium in Europe is the Camp Nou, the home of FC Barcelona, as you may have guessed from the crossword. Opened in 1954, it has a max capacity of 99,354. Wow, that is actually that is quite a lot. <laughs> and um, also explains that in Harry Potter, a horcrux is a thing that one imparts a portion of your soul into. And then there's some more explanation about that. And to go into a bit more detail about SPF, sun protection factor, the number rating is a measure of the proportion of UV rays that will reach the skin. For a specified depth of sunscreen applied, an SPF rating of X means that the fraction of UV reaching the skin is one divided by X. Interesting. Okay, Kathleen Quinn. Oh, Kathleen Quinn has 
has a longer explanation about the Horcrux. I will I will leave you to look that up if you need it. I suspect a lot of you already already know. And um, a, a number of you, including George Adams and Patrick Verdier, and possibly I think other people as well, found the Saturday easier than the Friday, which I don't think, I think I may have had the opposite experience, but it is so hard to directly compare. But it does seem like many people found the Saturday puzzle on a relative basis easier than than I did maybe compared to other Saturdays. So it just goes to show how much of this sort of thing is really down to your own particular body of knowledge. I'm sure if I had known that um, Harry Potter bit and the uh, Game of Thrones thing off the bat, I would have gotten some very useful crosses immediately, like that X and Horcrux. Um, I don't remember what crossed it, but X is certainly a constraining letter. Anyway, that's that for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. And um, if you think you know somebody who might enjoy this sort of thing, uh, pass it along to them, either personally or through your online uh, community of choice. Uh, very much appreciated. It means a lot because it is really the only way we have to um, to spread the word about this thing. So thanks to everybody who's subscribed or has who's passed the word on in any way. And uh, thanks to everybody who's backed the Patreon campaign. I may have again forgotten to thank everybody as opposed to just today's benefactors, but thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. That is the way that um, I'm, I'm hoping to make this series a sustainable uh, enterprise. So, um, Oh, and uh, you can join the Discord chat server. Of course, it's free. You get an extra channel if you're a member of the uh, Discord, but otherwise it's free for anybody to join. Links to all, the th all of these things are in the description field underneath the video. And with that, I'll sign off for the day. I'll be back tomorrow for the much, much quicker Monday puzzle. I hope you will join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Mm -hmm.